Hello and welcome to Precon Decon, the video series where I deconstruct the pre-constructed decks of Magic the Gathering's history. In this video we're going to look at the last Khans of Tarkir deck, uh, which is the Tima Avalanche, uh, which is blue, red, green. Uh, yeah, let's just take a look at the deck list. So we've got 22 creatures, 7 instants, 3 sorceries, 2 artifacts, 1 enchantment, and 25 land. Mana curve off to the side there. Uh, let's dive in and start looking at the, uh, the cards in the deck. So... I should love this deck because it's my um it's my three favorite colors uh and it's my favorite uh wedge combination I think uh because I like blue green I like blue red I like red green all together so I should love this deck but um unfortunately I, I I kind of don't actually um and we'll see why as we um sort of look at the deck so the foil face wrap is Avalanche Tusker, uh, so two green, blue, and a red for a 6-4. Uh, whenever it attacks, type creature defending player controls blocks uh, blocks at this combat if able. So, kind of a theme I'm noticing with these uh, Khan's Tarkir decks is that the foil face rare um, feels more like, you know, like a strong uncommon rather than like a rare, or like it's a weak rare, you know, it's in that kind of sort of nebulous between, between rarity kind of thing, you know? Um, because like to me like firstly nothing about this feels like blue or red this is like almost certainly like a mono green like this could be a mono green card and it would feel fine like nothing about it feels blue or red it feels very and that's kind of um a thing i remember back in like shards of alara you know like another three color set where you had some three color cards and just like what about this is you know the other two colors um always think of the um uh like wave skimmer avon uh in the bant deck which was it was like a flyer with exalt but like how how is this green in any way you know <laughs> stuff like that uh so avalanche tusker um it's not it's not dreadful it's not dreadful uh you know it's five mana for six four and it forces a block you know so in a way it's kind of like a it's kind of janky like removal like fight effect really i suppose and it? It, if you want to be very generous about it um but yeah it's just the fact it's sort of like I don't know. It attacks, it forces a block. If it could like untap a creature and force it to block, I think that would actually be uh that would be really good um to force a tapped creature to uh, untap and block it. That would be really good. But like as is, it's just like sort of just a big dumb creature. It does like nothing else. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, it's it's not it doesn't really excite me that much. Um, I think it's pretty weak as a uh, foil face rare, honestly. Um, so then we have a single Bear's Companion, uh, so two, a green, a blue, and a red for a 2-2. Two, two. When it ends the battlefield, you make a 4-4 four, four green bear creature token, which, um, again, what about this is, like, blue or red? Um, <laughs> you know, again, you can maybe say, oh, like, oh, it's making a big creature that's, like, kind of red, oh, it has an ETB effect, maybe blue. But yeah, again, this could be, like, a mono green card, and you'd be, like, fine with it, wouldn't you? Like, yeah. Um, this is okay, obviously it's making six powers worth of stuff on the board, um, I don't think in the deck you have any way of, like, bouncing it and replaying it. Um, it's just, it's just kind of okay, again, it's just, it's just all right. Um, and then we have, uh, two Air of the Wild, so this is actually then showing off the Tima keyword, which is, uh, Ferocious. So Air of the Wilds is actually a pretty good card, I think, so one in the green for a 2-2 two -two with Death Touch, which is, you know, fairly solid. Um, and it has this uh, ferocious ability. So this is also kind of why I don't like Teamer actually, because like their keyword feels very like lazy, I suppose maybe, um, or like it it didn't excite me at the time. So ferocious is um, basically if you have a creature with power four or greater, like you get the ferocious trigger. So it's basically Naya. Uh, again, all the way back from Shards of Lara, but just like you're one power less because Naya cared all about like um, stuff with power five or more. Um, and Ferocious is power four or greater. Um, the difference about Ferocious is that it does show up on um, uh, like non-creature spells like more than the sort of Naya power five matters did because that really only showed up on on creatures and like um, yeah, it was more about giving creatures with power five more like like keywords or bonuses or whatever. Whereas Ferocious, I think, is like maybe in hindsight it's a little more flexible as a keyword. Um, but yeah, it still felt a bit a bit kind of like lazy when I first saw it. Like I wasn't too impressed by it. Um, anyway, so Ferocious, uh, the ability, whenever Air of the Wilds attacks, if you control a creature with power 4 or greater, it gets plus 1, plus 1, turn 10. Um, so yeah, it's a 3-3 three, three when it attacks, uh, which is okay. Um, yeah, and it's got Death Touch, which is fine. Um, always nice when a small creature has Death Touch. Yeah, Air of the Wilds is, is, is fine. 
Um, so then we have a bunch of Morph, because Morph is back in Karnsataki, and it's crazy that it's taken until the fifth deck now uh, to talk about Morph being back, because the last time we saw Morph was... Ooh, I want to say... I want to say Time Spiral, I think was the last time we had Morph, thinking about it. I can't think of a set we had um, after that, where it showed up. Oh, my mind's gone blank. If, uh, yeah, I'm sure if, if, if Morph has been, <laughs> has Morph been in a set between, um, between Time Spiral Block and Khan's, like, yeah, stick it in comment because I, I can't remember if it has. But anyway, Morph, if you're new to the game, um, let's look at Ice Feather Raven first. So, uh, one green, one blue for a 2 2 flyer, which is fine. That's, um, that's classic Gaia Skyfolk stats. And uh, here's Morph for one cards, a green and a blue. So, Morph means, um, you can cast it face down. Um, as a 2-2 with no colour or creature types or anything for three um, colourless mana, and you can turn it face up at any time for its morph cost, which in this case is one green and a blue. Um, so morph actually is a pretty smart choice, I think, for including in cards like a, in a three colour set, just because you, know, you might have, um, well, firstly in this deck you've got a load, like a load of really big creatures anyway, so having morph on them lets you... Um, cast them face down and actually get them on the table and later on you can unflip them and then they're there. So you can actually get something on the board. Um, and also because it's a three, you know, a three colour deck, mana fixing might be a bit kind of wonky. So like, again, having the ability to cast something um, as a two, two, for only three generic mana is is pretty solid. Um, it just, again, means you don't have to worry too much about, you might be stuck on like three forests or whatever and not really have it, holding a hand of you know, triple colour cards and be like, oh, I can't cast any of these, um, you know, because I'm playing in three colours, but at least I can put this face down and have something. It's obviously it's not wonderful, it's about as basic as you can get. It's a, you know, it's a 2-2 two -two with no abilities or colour or type or anything, but at least it's something, at least it's a body on the board. And then later on when you do get the mana, if it survives, then you can flip it. And also, you know, flipping it face up is also like a combat trick because you can do it in the middle of combat and, you know, in some cases, like the Snowhorn Rider, um, flipping combat is essentially giving it plus three, plus three and trample, you know, on the on the turn it flips. So think of it that way. Um, so Ice Feather Raven is, um, when it's turned face up, you can return another type of creature to its owner's hand. So actually you can use this to get the um, Bear's Companion and recast it. I think it's smart use is obviously just bouncing an opponent's creature. Um, while you've also got like, and then you've got a 2-2 two -two flyer as well. So yeah, I like Ice Feather Raven, it's okay. Um, so we've talked about Snowhorn Rider, um, by, you know, by extension a little bit there. Um, three, a green and blue and a red, so six mana for 5-5 five, five Trample, which is okay. Um, once again, what is blue or red about this card? <laughs> again, maybe maybe red, because it has Trample, I suppose, and green and red usually share Trample. But yeah, there's nothing really blue about it, is anyway. Um, and then it has Morph, so you can do it face down for three and flip it face up for five. So the morph costs are usually, um, yeah, if the morph, uh, if the morph doesn't have an effect when it flips over, it's usually like one less than its main, uh, than its casting cost. So yeah, you can do it that way. Like if you do it over two turns, you get it for technically cheaper, I suppose. But yeah, I mean, it's just a five, five trample. It's okay. Um, and then a single pine walker, uh, three double green. For a 5-5, five, five, has morph uh, for 4 and a green. Uh, whenever it or another creature you control is turned face up, you untap that creature, which is really nice if you're like morphing stuff as you're attacking. Um, and then it can untap, you get 3 untap, and it's essentially like pseudo-vigilance. Um, or if you're being attacked and you morph some stuff and then you've got a surprise blocker. Um, yeah, it's kind of fun, I think. Um, kind of wish there were more... Um, yeah, like uh, like morph flip effects, because um, I don't think there's too many. I think it's really just the ice fed raven, uh, ice fed raven, this pine walker, and I think the rest are just like big creatures. Um, we've got two woolly locks on. Oh, I just noticed that's the wrong, that's the wrong symbol. That's the twenty fifth anniversary version. Oh, I'm a fool. It should have the Khans of Tarkir symbol. Oh, what a faux pas. Anyway, woolly locks on uh, five and double green for a six seven. Has more for five and a green. Yeah, it's just a big creature. It doesn't even have trample or anything. It's just it's just a big, big creature. Fine. Uh, two glacial stalker, uh, five and a blue for a four five. Again, more for four and a blue. It's just it's just literally just a big creature. It's you know, um, yeah. <laughs> it's not not really much to say. It's just it's just a big creature. Um, sure. Um, and then two elvish mystics. Uh, one green manager for a one one taps to give you green, which is good for. Yeah, ramping out into these big expensive creatures you got, or like paying their very expensive morph costs. So yeah. Um, and then we got a single thundering giant, three and double red for a four three with haste. Fine. 
<laughs> yeah, it's okay. Um, two Summit Prowlers, two and double red for a 4-3 with, again, like, no abilities. Um, sure. <laughs> um, really, actually, uh, there's a little bit of trivia, which I might as well say about Summit Prowler. This gets reprinted. Um, I want to say either in uh, Fate Reforged or Dragon's Dark here, it has, like, the exact same art, except there's a dragon in the background cause to represent, like, the... Um, the alternate timelines of Khan's Attack here, which I think is is uh, pretty funny. And I think it's the only card that does it, that does that uses the exact same dart with a small um, adjustment to the art, which is, um, yeah, like, you know, say a drain in the background, which is, there we go, small bit of trivia about Sonic Prowler. Um, single Tusk Colossodon, uh, four and double green for a 6-5. Yep, again, just no abilities, just a big creature. Uh, two Alpine Grizzlies, two in the green just for a 4-2. Again, no abilities. And two Rune Claw Bears, one in the green just for 2-2. Two, two. Again, no abilities. So just, there's a lot of vanilla stuff in here. So, which annoys me because I, I would feel so disappointed if I bought this deck. And like, so, like so many of the cards we looked at. I mean, like, you, you know, Morph is obviously technically ability. But like, they do nothing after being morphed. They're just a big creature. Um, I would feel very disappointed buying this deck personally. Uh, so moving on to non-creature spells, so we've got a single Icy Blast, um, so X and a blue. Uh, you tap X target creatures, but if you have, uh, if Ferocious goes off, you control a creature the powerful or greater. Uh, those creatures are um, frozen, they don't untap during their controls next untap step. Um, so this, this is kind of fun, actually, although I think pretty much all the non-creature spells have uh, Ferocious, or at least the majority of them do. And um, yeah, this is like a fun effect, obviously, just tapping um, a bunch of stuff down at instant speed is obviously strong. If you can tap, um, you know, if you can keep them tap down, that's obviously even better. You've got obviously a lot of creatures in the deck which have power four or greater. You know, the vast majority of them do. Um, so it shouldn't be a hard condition to me. But I also feel like this is uh, maybe something you want to play early on while you're still building your board of expensive stuff. So then you might not have the creature with power four or greater. But, you know, even then, at least if, if it stops like an attack for a turn, then I guess it's okay. Or gets blockers out of the way. Um, yeah, it's it's okay. Um, a single force away, uh, one in the blue, return type creature to owner's hand. Uh, ferocious, if you control a creature with power four greater, you may draw a card if you do discard a card. Um, this is okay for two, um, unsummon with a with a loot effect on it, with a card draw. Um, yeah, that's all right, I suppose. Um, a single stubborn denial, single blue, uh, you counter a non-creature spell unless it's control pays one, but if you control a creature with power four greater, counter that spell instead. So turning this into a hard counter. Um, for only like one blue is is really really strong because then it's what like um uh it's uh negate then isn't it uh negate for only a single blue which is really strong effect actually um so yeah that feels um that feels really strong uh that's that's is, that's is a good that's a good upgrade uh and a good thing to uh good incentive to have uh, the ferocious trigger on that so yeah I like that um single roar of challenge this is um a pretty uh fun effect I think so two in a green. Uh, all creatures able to block target creatures this turn do so. So, like, yep, nice lure effect, so everything else gets by. Um, but if, if you have Ferocious, the um, targeted creature gets indestructible in turn, so even better. So uh, you, you do roar a challenge, everything has to block uh, that one creature, <clears throat> and it can't die because it's indestructible. So, yeah, really, really, really great. Goes really nicely on the air of the wilds because it's got Death Touch. So having Death Touch Indestructible kills off like a um, bunch of bunch of uh, things blocking it while everything else gets through. So yeah, I really like, I really like Rora Challenge, actually. Uh, and then two Savage Punch, uh, this absolute meme-worthy art um, of Surak punching a bear. Um, so one in the green, Turk Reach you control, fights Turk Reach you don't control. So um, at that point, it's an it's a overpriced Prey Upon, but you have Ferocious. The creature you control gets plus two, plus two to the end of turn um, before it fights. So, yeah, then it acts as a um, pump spell before the fight, which is really good. Obviously, that means then you've got, um, you know, if you've got a smaller creature, you can punch up um, or, you know, you might have a creature then that um, helps it survive the fight or win the fight or whatever. So, yeah, um, that's, a, again, like a pretty good spell like that. Uh, and then a single dragon grip, uh, two and a red, aura goes on a creature. Uh, you control a creature with power four grid, you can cast dragon grip as though it has flash. Um, and the enchanted creature says plus two, plus naught, and has first strike. So being able to do this at instant speed would be um, a pretty strong combat trick, like giving first strike at instant speed is always is always really good. Um, yeah, it's again, it's okay. It's like a fine, uh, fine buff spell. 
Um, and then a bit of M15 stuff here. So a single lightning strike to do three damage type creature player. Yep, lightning strike is obviously a great inclusion. A single titanic growth um, for one in the green to give something plus four, plus four to turn ten. Yep, again, basic, but, you know, fine. Um, and then a single windstorm, X in the green, uh, do X damage to each creature with flying. Because uh, you don't actually have, I don't think, any ways of dealing with flyers in this deck. So this this is it. Your single windstorm, this is it. Uh, yeah, and that's it really. Uh, and then a single teamer charm, uh, so a green, a blue, and a red, uh, you choose one of the effects. Uh, type creature you control gets plus one, plus someone until end of turn. It fights a creature you don't control, which is okay, so it's a removal spell. Uh, counter type spell is a controller pays three, uh, so yeah, counter spell effect. Uh, creature with power three or less can't block this turn. That's also pretty good as well, like take away some more blockers. So all those effects I think are, are okay, you know, they're, they're all, that's a, that's a good menu of options. Uh, and then two team of banners, uh, three mana for, uh, we've seen all these banners, it gives you uh, green, red or blue and you can pay green, red and blue, tap it, sacrifice it, draw a card, yep, it's okay. Uh, then we got the team of uh, Triland, the Frontier Bivouac, I have no idea how to pronounce that, Bivouac, I don't know, it's like a campsite, isn't it? Um, and display tapped and gives you uh, green, blue or red, yep, fine. And then the usual trifecta here of um game lands that give you the three mana of the clan colors yep that's that's fine um and then eight forests seven mountains and five islands um so let's maybe talk about what could have been um i don't really i'm not a fan of this deck honestly just because like so many of the creatures are just kind of like big dumb vanilla creatures like they're not they're not exciting you know it's they're just big creatures um but like not big creatures in the way the big cre I find big creatures to be fun where they have, you know, like trample or menace or you know, like abilities. They're literally just high power and toughness and could be chump blocked forever. So I was thinking like what could have been um Sagu Mal Mala, I thought could have been an alternate rare here. Um so it's four green and blue for six six with trample and hexproof. So it's a big threat and it's hard to deal with. And um it has morph as well, so it plays into like kind of the small morph sub theme the deck kind of has. Uh so yeah, I think that would have been a uh, a good a good um alternate rare maybe. Or like you could have like honestly splashed red into this and then made it like a teamer card. You know, that would have been okay, and then that would have been a really good foil face rare. Uh Kratos Claws, um, as a, another alternate rare instead, so maybe Icy Blast, so X and a red. Does X damage to target creature or player? Um and you have Ferocious, it does two extra damage. So that that could be okay. Um, and I thought this from M15 might makes right. Uh, so five and a red, it's enchantment. Um, at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control each creature on the battlefield with the greatest power, you gain control of another creature. So if you have all the biggest creatures, then you um, get a free kind of act of treason every turn. Um, it's kind of a bit wobbly, a bit janky. You got to jump through some hoops for it. But like, I thought you got so many creatures with high power in here. It could maybe go off, but like, uh, maybe. Um, I'm not. I'm not sold on that. So. Yeah, I don't know. Could have just used more cheap removal spells, like more lightning strikes, maybe, I suppose, while you build a build a board of big big fatties. Uh, so in summary, I don't really like this one at all. Um, I think it's just because, like, the selection of creatures is, like, really... Because it's just a bunch of vanilla creatures. Like, it, it you know, it just feel It doesn't feel very exciting. Like, if I opened this and I was looking through it, I'd be like, oh, it's, <laughs> it's, just, a, it's just a bunch of, like, bears. And, um, or, like, you know, big big dumb morph creatures like it's giving me like kind of legions flashbacks you know um so yeah not really impressed by this one at all which is a shame because it is like um it's my favorite three color combination or it's my combination of um the three two color pairs i like the most so for the deck to like not be exciting is um it's a little it's a little upsetting honestly and you know it's like the only it's like the only precon in this three color combination really as well which makes it even more even more um heartbreaking is a strong word but like it yeah it's um it's you know it's just a it's just disappointing isn't it um but what are your thoughts on this deck after seeing if you have any thoughts or comments about the uh deck or any of the cards in it stick a comment below always like reading those but we're now done with cards attack here we're going to move on to fate reforged so we're going back in time in terms of the storyline to um see what see what it was what Tarkir was like back in the day while there were still dragons kicking around um so we'll do that next time uh but yeah until then thanks for watching and listening and have a great day